Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include European Union's four top jobs up for grabs, Germany is self righteous and hypocritical, Schultz blocks advice on European Union membership, and this House would lift all veto powers of individual EU member states. Plus, European Union current account surplus rises to 47.9 billion euros in quarter four. It's Thursday, 20th of March. Thank you for taking the time to join me today. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. European Union's four top jobs up for grabs. It's all change at the top this year for the European Union, kicking off with May elections for the European Parliament, followed by the naming in July of a new speaker. In November, EU leaders will appoint a new president of the European Commission, the EU's executive arm, when its five-year mandate ends, as well as a new chair of the bloc's political wing, the European Council. In addition, the 28 member states must replace Catherine Ashton at the European External Action Service, which was set up in 2009 to coordinate EU foreign policy and has become one of the bloc's most high-profile roles. This article takes a look at what is at stake as well as the favourites to win the posts. Germany is self-righteous and hypocritical. George Soros is set to ignite a fresh row over Europe this week with the launch of a new book in which he alleges that self-righteous and hypocritical German economic policy is a threat to the European Union. The billionaire investor tells Dr. Gregor Peter Schmitz in a series of interviews collected in The Tragedy of the European Union that Europe is now dominated by tensions between creditor and debtor nations. Mr. Soros also says he believes the single currency has transformed the European Union from a voluntary association of equal states to one which is now no longer voluntary and has Germany as its leader. Germany's tone is sometimes self-righteous and even hypocritical, Mr. Soros says. In 2003, Germany was among the first countries to break the Eurozone rules. In German, the word Schuld has a double meaning, both blame and debt, so it is natural to blame the debtor countries for their own misfortunes. But with the passage of time, Germany may become hated and resisted as an exploiter, and the European Union may dissolve in arimony. Well, indeed we agree, but perhaps the key reason for the eventual collapse of this European Union is because it has been built on a lie. The people of almost all nation member states were told they were joining a trading community, a shared marketplace, but what they got was a supranational federal superstate governed by 28 unelected, self-appointed elites Little wonder under the weight of such lies that Britain, Greece, Portugal and even Catalonia in Spain and Veneta in Italy want to break away from their long-standing inclusion in their own nations simply to escape the tyranny of the EU. Schultz blocks advice on EU membership. The President of the European Parliament has blocked legal advice on whether an independent Scotland could be fast-tracked to EU membership. Martin Schulz personally intervened to stop publication of the opinion sought by Labour and UK Independence Party members because he feared it could amount to interference in the independence debate. The German Social Democrat wields huge power in Strasbourg as Parliament President and despite British and Labour opposition is also a leading candidate to replace current Commission President José Manuel Barroso. His intervention means it is now unlikely that there will be any formal opinion expressed by any European institution on membership for Scotland or Catalonia, which will also hold an independence vote later this year. So, folks, as you can see, when it comes to the EU Parliament, what Martin Schulz says goes. 
And do you really believe that Big Cheese, Dave Cameroni, will be able to renegotiate and repatriate powers from the EU when already Martin Schulz has said categorically that will not happen? Our Brave New Europe series tells us that to repeal, retract, renegotiate or repatriate any EU law requires a unanimous vote from the 28-member EU Commission. Can you see how, under such circumstances, any ideas that David Cameron can or will repatriate anything is complete and utter cabbage soup? However, what it does mean is that without such renegotiation, then the Cabbage Patch Kid from Eton can legitimately renege on his promise of a referendum because the relationship has not been renegotiated. <laughs> Reminds me of Edward Heath when he said, I need hardly mention there is no threat to Britain's essential sovereignty. Well, the word essential gave him the room to hand over much of Britain's sovereignty to the unelected Bruswellian overlords without even a flinch. This House would lift all veto powers of individual EU member states. Well, following the point about majority voting and how the EU power structure precludes renegotiation, this article in your letters has a concise and detailed breakdown of exactly how the power structures of Europe work. Now, I won't cover any of the article here in the news as it requires complete reading and taking a look at the supporting links too. But I encourage you to take the time to read this fantastic letter and also to read our Brave New Europe series if you haven't yet done so. It is these works and, of course, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office document 301048, which you can find in our 1972 et al. section, that really demonstrate why we have a silent monster elephant in the room called the European Union. European Union current count surplus rises to 47.9 billion euros in quarter four. Hot off the press in our Euro economics section, the EU's seasonally adjusted external current account recorded a surplus of 47.9 billion euros in the fourth quarter of 2013, the EU statistical office Eurostat estimated on Friday. Compared with a surplus of 31.8 billion euros for the third quarter of 2013, the EU registered a rise of 50.6% in trade surplus in the fourth quarter of last year over the previous quarter. In the fourth quarter of 2013, the seasonally adjusted surplus of the goods account expanded to 11.4 billion euros from a surplus of 0.9 billion euros in the third quarter of 2013. According to Eurostat, the recovery of the European economy is partly driven by the current surplus increasing for several consecutive quarters. However, the current exchange rate for the euro against the US dollar has reached the highest level since October 2011. This is weighing on the further expansion of the EU's current surplus. Now, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.